Hello everyone! In this week's video, I'm going to be drawing myself as a magical girl. I'm going to start off by doing the sketching in liner on the computer, and then I'm going to print it off and then color it with Copic markers. So let's get started! So first I'm starting off by trying to plan out some poses and do like some little thumbnails as to what I want the drawing to be. This first pose kind of had me having a paintbrush and I'm kind of swooping it around. <laughs> uh, so. Uh, my story is that I'm a magical girl that is saving the world from bad guys that want to steal all the color from the world and I'm like a magical artist and I have to bring all the color back. <laughs> uh, so that's my story. So I have this magical paintbrush and at first the paintbrush was really really big and I actually make it quite a bit smaller in the end and I quite liked this pose where I'm kind of jumping to the side and it's all kind of wishy. I really liked that one but I wasn't sure I'd be able to pull it off. Here I'm kind of trying to do a more actual sketch for it and it wasn't really working. I was having a really hard time with the legs and I'm like, eh, I don't want to do that pose. And so I start over again and start trying to think of other poses to do that includes the paintbrush. And with this one I was in profile view and I'm like swooping the paintbrush around me. And paint is also coming off of the paintbrush. And I didn't really like that one either and I kept going back to this one so I'm like, okay let's try this one again. So I went back to my first little thumbnail and just kind of sketched over that and I'm like, okay this is kind of working. Uh, so I decided to go with this one and just see what happens. <laughs> and so I take this one and I make it the full size of what I want the picture to be and I start cleaning it up and adding more details. I was quite nervous about this pose just because it was a little bit complicated and I wanted it to not look stiff. I wanted it to look like it had a ton of movement in it. But I'm really happy I picked this pose. I feel like it turned out pretty nicely in the end. Here I'm trying to do that arm. That arm was troublesome. <laughs> I, I kept messing up with it and I'm like, yeah, that arm's not working. So I end up putting the paintbrush in the other hand and making it a lot smaller. Um, here I kept making the paintbrush really, really big, but like the paintbrush just kept getting in the way. And so here I am having the other arm be down and the paintbrush is in that hand. And then in my other hand, I'm going to make myself hold a paint palette uh, with all the colors on it. I also have the paint kind of swooping in like an S-like shape. Uh, I changed that later because I felt like the bottom of the picture just looked kind of empty. So I have it go more in like a straight curve. And I also didn't want the paint to like totally cover the skirt and stuff. And so I change how I place the paint. The legs were really hard too. I kept having to redo the legs, especially the one that's coming up. Because I didn't want it to look like I just lost the lower half of my leg. <laughs> and so, but I drew my foot there so it just kind of looks like I'm bending my leg. And we can kind of see the tip of my foot. And I made my hair super duper duper long because magical girls often have super awesome flowy hair. So my, I made my hair ridiculously long and I also made myself wear a beret because it's like the stereotypical artist hat. <laughs> and I have myself wearing a really poofy dress with really poofy sleeves. And I just try to add a lot of little details because magical girls tend to have like a lot of little details in their outfits. So here I am doing my cleaned up sketch. This is the sketch I do before the line art. I actually don't show myself doing the line art because it's kind of boring. And it's kind of just a repeat of the clean up sketch. Um, so yeah. Here I'm adding the shoe. The shoe actually ends up getting covered up by the paint quite a bit. And here I'm drawing the hand for the paint palette. It was kind of tricky, but thankfully I have drawn a character holding a paint palette before. So I, I kind of had experience with paint palette holding. <laughs> and here I'm drawing the hand holding the paintbrush. And that went a lot better than I thought it would. I thought that hand was going to be really, really, really hard and that it was going to take me forever to draw. But it actually went pretty smoothly and it didn't take me forever, so that's good. And for my hair, I kind of have it curve out and then it kind of curves back in and kind of points towards me. 
I do that because I want to try to keep the viewer's eye within the picture. So if I have the hair going down and then swooping up back towards the face, it kind of encourages the viewer to look at the hair and then look at the face and then look at the paint. And I just kind of have try to have everything kind of pointing in a certain direction that will lead you back to the face because I want that to be the focal point. And here's the finished line art. I feel like the line art turned out pretty well. The ruffles on the dress was really, really hard. <laughs> I always have a hard time with ruffles. So now we're going on to the coloring. And for the watercolor paint, I wanted it to have kind of a rainbow gradient. And I wasn't totally sure I'd be able to pull this off. I was really nervous. So I was going to just make the paint blue. But then I'm like, you know, I really, really want to try doing the rainbow gradient because I feel like it'd make the picture super cool. And my paint is supposed to be magical and like color everything. So I thought it'd be really cool if it included like all the colors of the rainbow. And so I decided to just go for it. It was the first thing I tried to do because I'm like, well, if I mess up and it doesn't turn out, I can just print my line art off again and then just not do the rainbow gradient. So, but I decided I really wanted to try it and I'm really glad I did because it actually turned out pretty okay. <laughs> um, so I actually picked all of my Copic markers beforehand and I tried to make as smooth of a color transition as I could with the colors I have. I don't have a lot for orange, so from the orange to yellow to pink was kind of tricky because I don't have very many oranges. Uh, but I tried to make it work by using a lot of different pinks and yellows. Uh, but overall, I feel like the gradient turned out really, really cool and I'm really happy I went for it because I feel like it just makes the picture look so much more colorful and pretty. So basically for the gradient, I just kept switching back and forth between my colors and I tried to work really, really fast because for Copic markers to blend nicely, you kind of have to work while they are wet on the paper. And so I was trying, I was like flinging caps off of all the Copics and just like trying to work as fast as I could. I was holding like multiple Copics in my hand, <laughs> trying to work as quickly as I could so I could make the gradient really nice. And here I'm starting in on the hair. I used uh, two colors for my hair. I used a darker brown and a lighter brown. And that worked nicely for my hair. I, my hair is actually quite a bit darker, I think, than what I drew it in the picture. But I didn't want my hair to be too dark because like, I didn't want it to be like a lot darker than everything else. And it's just like, boom, like you instantly just look at my hair. I wanted it to kind of blend in with the picture. So I made it a little lighter than how I usually color it just so that it's not overpowering the picture with how dark it is. I also tried to work really quickly on the hair. I used a more flicky motion when coloring the hair, so it kind of looks like streaks of hair when I'm coloring it. Uh, for the dress, I used a purple, a dark blue, and then a lighter blue. And then I'd blend it out. I liked using the purple first and it just kind of made it look really interesting. And I used the purple first because then I can easily blend it out with the darker blue and the lighter blue. So I came up with the idea for this picture because on Patreon I do a monthly sketch poll. And my $5 patrons, they get to suggest things for the sketch poll. So if they wanted me to draw Link from The Legend of Zelda, they could suggest that. And then everyone votes for which one they want to see. And whatever one gets the most votes is the one I draw. And one of my patrons uh, suggested drawing myself as a magical girl. And that one ended up winning, which I thought was really cool. I didn't think that one would win, but I'm really happy it did because I had a lot of fun drawing it. <laughs> and so I thought it would make for an interesting YouTube video. So I decided instead of it just being a sketch, I'd make it a full illustration. So here I'm going in with the yellow on the dress. Oh, also, I wanted my dress to mostly be themed about around the primary colors. At first I was going to do like my favorite colors, like teals, pinks, and purples. But then I'm like, well, if I'm a superhero that saves the world from no color, my outfit should be based around the primary colors because we can make all of the colors with primary colors. I decided to use blue, pink, and yellow. I wanted it to be pastel versions of the primary colors. I didn't want to use a super bright red or a super bright blue. I mean, the blue and the yellow are still pretty um, bright, but they're still on the pastel side. Um, so yeah, I'm basically just using pastel versions of the primary colors, and I feel like it turned out pretty nicely. I wasn't sure if I would get them to kind of look cohesive and nice together, but I feel like they look pretty good together. Here I'm working on the skin, and oh my word, the skin 
was troublesome. <laughs> so for some reason, like when I print out my line art, sometimes they'll randomly decide, hey, I'm going to smudge in this spot and the Copic marker will just make the line art smudge. And it kept doing it on the face for some reason. I have no idea why. Uh, thankfully, I mean like it wasn't super bad and you kind of only notice it if you know about it. But there's this one spot on the cheek, like for some reason my Copic I used for the skin tone got like ink on it and then I went on the cheek of my face and then it left like these three dark gray smudges and I was just like, oh no, I think I just ruined the picture. But thankfully I was able to kind of co cover it up with color pencil and it's not super noticeable. You kind of only notice it if you know about it. So yeah, I was able to save it. I'm like, oh yeah, it scared me. <laughs> so here I'm going in with the color pencil, trying to kind of cover it up. I was using white to lighten things and going in with skin tone. Yeah, just trying to blend that area out. And here I'm going in with white acrylic paint for all of the highlights. So I used some white acrylic paint for the highlights in my eyes. And I also put a lot of highlights on the paint to make it look shiny and more liquidy. I wanted it to look really shiny and like it was watercolor paint. So here is the finished picture. I had so much fun working on it and coloring it. I think my favorite part about the picture is the rainbow gradient. I am so happy with how that turned out. It is a little splotchy in some areas and it's not a totally perfect gradient, but I feel like it turned out pretty nicely. A lot nicer than I was expecting it to. <laughs> So yeah, it was so much fun and thank you so much to my patron Anne for suggesting it. And before I end this video, I want to say thank you so much to my patrons including Rachel, Bonnie, Cash Money Matt, Julie, Robert, Tamal and Pisotera, Anne, Magic Gamer Dad, Eduardo, AJ, Vorman, Pia, Narichan, Daniel, Jim, Andrew, Aaron and Patrick. Thank you so much for being a patron and for your support. It truly means a lot to me. So that is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you all next week in my next video. Bye!